yeah, all right. So uh, I can see the urgency. We can see the urgency. Um, and a, another big urgency, apart from the, the, the people who are monitoring the market, uh, telling us there's an urgency, is that we know if it, it's, the, it's, the, it's the, the adage, if it can be digitised, it will be digitised, all right? So everything's moving to digitisation, everything, all right? Uh, and with that, is, is, it's, it's, it's on demand, consumption, all right? It's in the cloud, it's consumption economics, all right? That is a ridiculously high number of transactions that the traditional channel uh, haven't been, uh, pro- uh, isn't set up, we know that, isn't set up to handle, but have to, um, or we could say a, the, what was the, was the old ecosystem, uh, was the, the traditional channel, but it's the new ecosystem, which is the channel plus, and there are new players coming in, all right? New players coming in and, 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 and provide, providing technologies that allow for merchant of record on lots of, lots of uh, uh, you know, lots of currencies and lots of places, um, being able to automate renewals and orchestrate um, orchestrate uh, opportunities to sell re- true reference architectures. That's happening. It's available to everyone. But it seems to me that it's the new actors that are coming in and embracing that. All right. Um, am I blind or is this ge- a generic that you guys are seeing? Oh, I think there's no question that, you know, the number of new players coming in is significant. I mean, for the last, you know, 10 plus years, you've seen this, the emergence of this techno-functional channel coming in, you know, for example, like the uh, HR consultant Mm. who learns success factors and then learns to bring their consulting skills on top of of a workflow platform. That's a new type of channel, especially when we're, we grew up with the IT infrastructure channel that we're just basically no, no, no insult intended, but they were IT plumbers. You know, they weren't actually going into the lines of business and doing business process that related to manufacturing or HR or supply chain or what have you. They were just kind of in, you know, in the VMware uh, uh, server storage uh, security, which is really important. Don't get me wrong. A lot of illities are there, but what's happened with the spend, right? And this is, 15 year trend is the spend has continued to move outside of IT and into the lines of business. And as that's happened now, it's created a, a whole new opportunity for digital transformation and for what I'll call LOB functional expertise to come in with very little plumbing skills, but a lot of like brain power, a lot of know how on the business side and less on the plumbing. And cloud has enabled that, right? Because cloud has made it easier to get the plumbing to work theoretically. Uh, but what's happened, I think, that's really interesting, back to your point about ecosystem economics, I would argue, and we're not quite there yet, but we're close. We're close to a time where companies are going to start to buy ecosystematically. What I mean by that is they're going to stop accepting these rogue best of breed solutions if they're not copacetic with an ecosystem. And what I think is going to happen as a result of that is there's going to be a new opportunity. Maybe it'll be e- ecosystem MCPQ, uh, Right where you'll manage the ecosystem and then do the CPQ part. But what I mean by that is think of the average enterprise, right? The average enterprise is 130 SaaS applications that are turning over, 50% of them turning over every two years. There's 21,000 points of integration. It is a nightmare for the average IT organization to deal with this explosion of SaaS. That means someone needs to manage that. If I were a managed service provider or a bar today, the very first thing I would do is I would say, how can I up my game to face the customer at their ecosystem and manage it for them. Help them make choices about what to procure. Help them determine whether they're getting cost value. Help them to uh, increase their return on investment by getting the stuff that they buy configured and and ready to go and enabled quicker. Making sure that those rogue applications that are not being used get churned or that the integrations that are needed get built so that they can get the returns. I mean, this is an increasingly big problem and uh, I just think it's a great opportunity for the channel if it wants to step into that role. And I think, you know, one of the things I'm excited about IS is you guys have a lot of the rub- a lot of the, the tooling to help companies with that. And it's 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 interesting to, to to see that there are still some companies that are, like you said, trying to pretend like the world hasn't just flipped on a minute. Well, I think I think to your point about uh, someone managing the sort of the SaaS world for each customer. The challenge they're going to have, or they're having right now, is that hits right. The IT manager sees his job as that's what he's doing, 
And I think, and I've always said, the problem with, um, you know, what the IT guys call shadow IT, which is any SaaS application because it sits outside, um, is that they're always threatened. You know, IT has been all about, all about productivity, embracing change and getting faster and doing everything until it impacts IT. Then they don't want anything to do with it because they want to protect their camp. And so you're always going to hit the smartest companies I've seen so far are moving effectively IT management process either to, um, over to finance or operations because they're now buying business initiatives, not buying IT plumbing, to your point. You don't need to be an IT plumber anymore. You can outsource the entire sewerage system, if you like, off to Amazon or Azure or whatever it is, and you don't have to worry about that anymore. So that's where the, the smart channel players are going to get into the business guys rather than trying to hit the IT guys because they're going to block at every level. Yeah, yeah I wonder if though, I wonder if I would just challenge one thing. I'm not sure I'm challenging, but just clarifying. I think that the um, digital transformation and cloud economics and cloud uh, um, systems of record and whatnot have, have eliminated the plumbing on an intra application basis. In other words, you don't need to stand up the server. You don't need to stand up the storage. You don't need to worry about that. So the provisioning is really fast. Uh, but, but the inter application plumbing is still an issue. Yep. Because the integrations between the solutions aren't necessarily either built or any good. And that leads to everyone suffering. The yep. users suffer, the vendors suffer. Yep. So yep. I don't think I think the challenge is has to kind of like make a pivot from focusing on the plumbing this way to fo focusing on the workflow this way. Yes. If they get that end-to-end -end story right, yeah. uh, including CPQ, right? Because you don't right. do CPQ like this. This is easy. CPQ yeah. is hard because of all the, yeah, yeah, the yeah. different solutions across that stack, right? That's why it's that's why you need a solution. Yeah. Keep well, me honest really there. That's a really important point because the infrastructure is not off-premises, it's just on a different premises. And it has it's not keeping it's not keeping up with the demand of what that, that infrastructure is supposed to deliver in SaaS. And that's really important. And you can't even keep up with it because the transaction models aren't really there yet to do it. I love uh, what you said before, ecosystematics, and that kind of talks to the subject we're talking about and, and, and ecosystem CPQs. Um, but uh, Scott, I'll throw this to you because, I mean, last year IDC said that by 2026, 25% of organisations new applications, and they're going to be SaaS. I'm pretty sure they're talking about that. Uh, their new application portfolio will be consortia developed. In other words, developed by an ecosystem, as far as I'm concerned. I asked it well, was one of those all yeah, right, 10 absolutely. years ago, de developed that way. Yeah. Um, so you, you must, um, uh, you, you must uh, agree with that because that's what you're doing and that's where that came from. Are you surprised that by 2026, 20, 20, only 25% will be? No, I'm not surprised at all. I've been at this for 14 years. And the fact that I'm still talking to uh, US manufacturers and some distributors who are still using Excel or not even that in some cases to uh, operational at an operational level rather than, you know, let's go back a step. There, there are companies out there that are sending their heads off to India as we speak because that's going to save them money rather than using US personnel to quote. That's not, that's, that's not, it's not it, yes, it'll give you an initial savings, but now you're losing potentially cultural connections between channel partners and all the other issues that are related to that. But more importantly, why didn't you go straight to innovate, uh, straight to automation? Automation is the only answer to a, if you're really chasing a cost saving uh, delivery of the uh, operational processes inside any organization, outsourcing is dead, task sourcing is dead. All of that, throwing the knowledge out to someone else is not the way an operation any smart business should operate today we've seen it historically where the banks went to outsourcing and then they brought it all back in because they realized they'd lost their intelligence so it, it doesn't surprise me and there are still some very for IT companies very laggard type but they're very laggard type organizations in as far as innovation and I mean you've seen on a thousand LinkedIn posts from me you know sort of bashing my head against a brick wall about their IT guys. Why don't they fix their IT systems? I mean, is it because the speed level isn't across this? Is it because it's the, the C-suite is not across all this? There's a number of issues and they're different for different organisations. The biggest one I see is that Wall Street's still focused on net new sales. Like they, they want to know what the net new sales number is. Is the company growing? Is the company growing? But as you move to consumption economics, and let's, let's get real for a minute. 
most of the organization uh, organizations aren't a consumption they're at a contract so you still have to sign for three years it's not true i'm using it this month i'm not using it that month that's to me that's consumption so you've got wall street focused on net new uh sales and net new accounts rather than uh, uh the renewal of consumption economics underlying that the only company that i see and i you know i don't watch all of them is adobe's done the only successful job of getting wall street to understand it's now a consumption business and it's all about renewing on a monthly basis or a yearly basis depending on what the product is so yeah. i think the challenge for a lot of these old school companies is they're still running old school erps that are incapable of managing that sort of process mm. And although they might put lipstick all over the pig at the front, that's still not actually making the business easier for any of their partners or the end customer to deliver something of value to them, which is what we're all about. Yeah, I think it's an interesting, it's an interesting, uh, we're in an interesting time because the, uh, what is the, what is the unit of value, right? If the unit of value is a subscription and how many subscriptions I sold, then I think that we can look at the world in a, in, in a fairly simplistic perspective. But I think increasingly the unit of value is starting to shift. Like, let me give you, for instance, so one of our uh, philosophies with Go to Ecosystems is that if you can get someone else to develop on you or around you, you can create economic returns that are unfair competitively. Because if, you know, I have a dollar to spend and I can put that dollar to work to get nine other people to develop, then I have $10 of development. Whereas if I took that one dollar to spend and I just make products, I have one dollar development. So what this now is to do, the unit of value shifts from um, how many licenses did I sell to how much IP did I get created outside the four walls that then made the ecosystem more valuable. So like if you take some of these ecosystem like you know juggernauts like Apple, you know Microsoft, Salesforce, HubSpot, and you analyze their total ARR you see that a substantial portion of it comes from two things. One, uh, development that took place outside of their four walls. And two, monetization of that development, which lifted all the boats, including their original applications, which was what spawned the business in the first place. So I, I, I think that's the first thing to think about is that, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're not co-innovating, um, if you're not finding places to add value with something that's sticky, you're already missing the boat. And then secondly, you know, if you are developing software, and I know most of your listeners are probably mostly running channels, um, think about who else is, who is co-innovating on what platforms. And, and that might give you a clue about what ecosystem you might want to manage, what CPQ you might want to take advantage of, because the more it's adjacencies, the more it's connected, the more likely it is that you can add value. If things get disjointed and they're not adjacent, then you're kind of a cheap suit. So um, the other thing I want to just say, and I know it's not totally relevant for channel people, but bear in mind that the develop the IP that's going to get created is increasingly not going to be app dev. It's going to be no code. And as no code I, innovation continues to take its shape, uh, it's going to change a lot of the principles. In fact, I would even argue that no code makes channel a developer, even if the channel doesn't even have any because yeah. uh, you don't need any IP chops. You don't need to go develop, get developers. You can just essentially get business process and find tools that let you do configurations around the business process with no code. Get really, really good at that because you can get good at it fast. And it's another place where the channel can add value that is still innovation, but doesn't require the same kind of like hire a bunch of expensive developers and try to build the product. I'm not quite sure what no code means. I'm Scott knows because he's he's but he's a coder, right? So he would know. <laughs> a long time ago, Nicholas. So on, on behalf of my listeners, what is no code? So no code is is a configuration of workflow that doesn't require you to have coding language. You don't have to develop. Right. Basically, think drop drop down menus and configurable fields in English. So you imagine you want to do a six-step process. The system is designed to allow you to walk through a six-step process and end up with a, a software that actually does a process, but you didn't have to write a single ounce of code. Right. Okay. So it's like widgets and APIs and things like that coming together to give you exactly what you need to execute on. More, more like more right. like wizards. More like wizards, Nick. Okay. Yeah. Templates. Yeah. Templates are examples. Gotcha. Yeah. 
Gotcha, gotcha. Um, and uh, Alan, you know, I, I I do give you credit for the ecosystem CPQ because you made that up. Well, I've never heard it before until you made that. You you told me. Um, why is it important? What, and and in, in your mind, and why did it even come to you come to mind? Well, it came to mind because I I was realizing that you know, uh, by the way, for those of you who don't know, I actually grew up in wholesale distribution. So in the very beginning, I don't have quite forty years, but in the thirty plus years that I've been doing this channel partner stuff, I started in distribution. So I have a particular love for wholesale distribution because it was where I got my you know when I was a youngster is where I got my chops. And so I, I, I really do think aggregation uh, is a highly valuable uh, economic principle that applies to every marketplace. It's just you're aggregating different things at different times. And I think that it's exciting. You know, I know, Scott, Nick, your background, because you, you also come from distribution. And you you kind of got the religion of saying, oh, wait a minute, you know, we should be aggregating something different. Right. We shouldn't be putting things in warehouses and, and shipping them around. We should be finding some value that's more relevant. And so the aggregation point um, has moved. And now I think you said it right. You know, when you look at an enterprise, any customer who's got any number of SaaS applications, whether they're true consumption or contracts with renewable rates, it's a mess. It's a complete mess. It's a mess on a lot of levels. One place where it's a mess is on the whole CPQ side of it. So any when when it's when it comes time to is this stuff going to renew where is the risk am i getting value from it how do i configure a new offering um just that one piece alone i think is a is a must have and whether a channel partner is doing it directly or a channel partner wants to have a tool set that can help them do it well it's necessary and i i started i put some of the statistics you know 130 apps in the average enterprise turning over every two years 21,000 points of integration. It's it's a mess. And I don't think that the average enterprise is feeling good about this. I think there's a lot of pain. So I think e- ecosystem CPQ is a, is a way to think about solving for that problem on a holistic level versus what you have today, which is a, a whole bunch of horses coming to the stable in completely discoordinated way. Yeah. Vendor number one comes with their story and vendor number two comes with their story and vendor number three comes with their story. It's like, it's gotta be a nightmare for the average enterprise from a procurement perspective, just, just even knowing what's going on, let alone knowing what decisions they can make. So if you can automate the process of determining end to end the state of subscription so that you can optimize cost and lower risk and create more value, that's, that seems to be where e- ecosystem CPQ um, is is important. Other reason I think it's really important is if you go back 25 years or 20 years, you didn't have this panoply of applications. You had the Microsoft suite and the yeah. Oracle suite and the SAP suite. These guys had done it themselves or they bought their way and they're still doing it. Most of these guys didn't learn to do SaaS. They just bought SaaS companies and they called themselves cloud companies. Now they're getting it together. But for a long time, they didn't know SaaS, it hit them in the head. They just knew that they could buy them for some ridiculous multiple. Yeah. Um, and then they could tell Forrester and Gartner that they were cloud companies, uh, which is all, all, all together a little bit nutty. But I think that the, the bottom line is, as we see this proliferation of solutions, the ecosystem needs to be managed. And then a CPQ process needs to be invoked in order for customers to get value. And it's a giant opportunity for the channel if the channel can wake up and see that, you know, in a couple of years, that could be the source of significant revenue and, and margin versus those shrinking professional services I was talking about. But that's music to your ears, mate, but you could add to that. It, well, I'm going to ask you to add to that the addition of the um, the mess that's out there, which also includes a whole bunch of other transactions that need to come on top of it because no technology lives in isolation. You need to bring that one in as well. So that's the ex- what people call the expand cell, right? And then the extend cell, which uh, which is and, and reference architectures that have nothing to do with one one vendor, but several. Yeah. Um, well, to take so to take one of Alan's comments apart um, for ecosystem development. So you, let's say you're talking about the Salesforce.com and their apps being developed on Force.com. That's great. I see it a little bit differently. I see best of breed platforms out there, whether it's ERP or CRM or um, uh, support desk, help desk type systems, license management. So rather than being in one one ecosystem, what we do is we join them together 
as equal partners. So the, our ecosystems at an API level, not a you must develop on our platform or we must be on force.com or whatever it is. Okay. So um, that so there is a massive amount of platforms out there, but it, what it allows us to do is connect to the appropriate ones for that customer or that reseller or that distributor or that vendor. Mm. And I think that's where our ecosystem is a little bit different to, you know, force.com or an Oracle or a Microsoft, Azure, whatever it is. Uh, but that's a, for me, that's a critical thing because I grew up in distribution selling best of breed against you know, companies that might be selling that you must buy all of the products from our company. So um, just it's just a little bit of a twist on uh, Alan's ecosystem point. I mean, um, a bit but, of necessity. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the other thing I wanted to mention, you were talking about how many times someone has to buy something before you, you're going to get more success. I think Jack Johnson from TSIA is one, which was if you don't get an upgrade or a cross grade or an expand sell, in the cycle of the cloud piece or you know, whatever that consumption or subscription is, then you're unlikely to get to renewal. So it's actually even more critical to re-engage, even though you're mid cycle, whatever cycle that is, day, month, year, to upgrade or cross grade or whatever reference architectures um, with that customer. Um, I think that's even more critical today than historically people have kind of ignored expand opportunities or or mining install base for that sort of information. Uh, Alan, um, you, you have spoken to me about um, orchestrate the ecosystem to create new markets because um, that's the nirvana for the applications that people want to, uh, how, how people want to consume technology. Um, and you mentioned companies like Slack, Uber and Airbnb as as, as, as those typical ecosystem organisations that left their customers for dead. What I struggle with there is, is it a new market or was it just the ecosystem finding a better way for the existing market share to achieve customer success or its customer needs? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I thought about that when I wrote New Market and I even, when I was talking about how Salesforce went about doing it, saying, you know, did Salesforce create a new market for CRM? CRM had existed. They created a SaaS version of it. So sometimes it's a enough of a difference. Like I would argue Airbnb or, or Uber are enough different from hotels and taxi cabs to say it's a new market. I think that the, 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 the key things that, that differentiate old from new are a new feature set that delivers higher value or unique value that is combined with a network of multi-sided actors. So what I mean by that, like take Airbnb. So an Airbnb, it's not actually a new hotel room at all. It's just a house, right? But they've been able to repurpose that house as a hotel room. So that's kind of a new market. You know, if you went uh, 20 years ago, if I said, hey, you're gonna be able to rent a house for two, two days instead of a hotel room, you just said, that's crazy. You couldn't have imagined the hoteling experience to allow for that. So they reimagined something which still has a bed and a kitchen and a, and a bathroom, but is packaged totally differently. Uber is the same way, right? An Uber ride is still using a car and it's still picking up a passenger, but it's packaged. And so that's the one thing that the product, the tool is different. And the other thing that's different is the nature of the interactions. Remember, we talked about interactions between participants you know, you have to have both sides of the market showing up at the same time in the same place in order for it to work. You know, Airbnb has to be in the same city as the as the person that wants the Airbnb. If, yeah. the, if those supply and demand economics don't work out, you get bad experiences. Mm -hmm. So that's what makes the new market both interesting and hard. Mm -hmm. because, because I agree with you because a lot of my discussions are around Look, you know, someone's still staying somewhere. It's still accommodation or someone's still getting in a car and going somewhere. It's still that or, you know, with Slack, same thing. It's still just, it's a different way of doing the same thing. But what makes, what always made it possible and probably coming from the lens that I look at everything through, you know, because of my 30 odd years of, 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 of you know, building, you know, the kinds of companies that I've built, um, it's the transaction model that makes it possible. All right. It's the transaction model that made Uga uber possible and airbnb possible because it didn't exist that way before and now it can so the consumption economic side of it is important so when we talk about digital transformation um, and everything being digital therefore all businesses transforming digitally 
the transformation, the transaction model, and how the ecosystem comes together to do it, has to be a the the, the front of front of mind thought, not an afterthought. You know, on, on, yeah. on how you put, because that's actually driving how you're going to deliver, how you're going to, you know. Yeah, yeah. Available. Is that fair? Well, it's. Yeah, it's back to what you said. Everything that can be digitized will be digitized. And as that motion of I can now digitize this occurs, entrepreneurs start to go, hold on a minute. If I digitize the the ordering of the taxi yeah. and I connect it with a supply network of drivers, can I create a different kind of market experience? So the transaction is different. The interface is different. The interactions are different. The compensation and remuneration systems are different. The uh, ways that the um, that the markets are recruited and promoted is different. You know, it's it's like a. I mean, this this basic. I'm not saying anything new. I mean, go to ecosystem includes platforms, but platforms have been around for a long time, right? Platform. There's tons of books about platform economics and platform revolution, all that kind of stuff. Uh, what what we're think what we're thinking is, is important right now is that as it moves to B two B. Uh, that those platforms get empowered, and enabled by existing ecosystem members, who now have to take on different stripes. That's what makes B two B and tech kind of interesting. Is if you go into another market, like, yeah, you know, I guess you could argue that in in the case of Airbnb going into the taxi cab business, most of the drivers were not taxi cab drivers. Whereas in our space, in B two B, in our space, most of the participants in B2B will be traditional channel partners. Right, right. Some new ones. But anyone who wants to keep playing has got to learn new tricks right. big time. Absolutely. Absolutely. And 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 that's the uh and that's the call to arms. That's what we're trying to do. Get you know, you you just have to rearrange the way that you what you've been doing, what you've been doing to meet the way that your customers want to consume what you've been selling and exactly you know, get, get, exactly. Together, get together with that program. It's so important. Alan, mate, you've been very generous with your time as always. And I really appreciate it. I'm also going to ask you to come Pleasure. back again and again, because um, this is the kind of stuff that my audience wants to listen to. I do want to mention your seminar on the go-to ecosystem. Part one has already happened. You can, um, anyone can look at that as a, as, as a recording on, um, go to go to you on LinkedIn and you'll find that, all right? Yep. Um, there's probably a hundred of them, but there's only one that looks like him. Um, and also part two, which is on the 14th, right? 15th. 15th, 15th, 14th in our world, uh, 15th in the rest of the world. Um, and, and look at part two because what I'm excited about part two is it's actually the practical side of it. It's the execution side of it. It's how do you actually do it? Part one, That's right. why it's important. And we've spoken a lot about this, particularly in, in one swim lane of, 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 of where my world operates in. But I just, I implore anyone who wants to know how their business is going to be changed and what they can do about it straight away if they're a channel player or even if they're not a channel player, but particularly if you're a vendor, right? You know, start looking at this kind of stuff because Alan is working yeah. with the the best and he's coming up with systems that are going to definitely accelerate your ability to move into a go-to-market that um, uh, is going to tell, give you a roadmap. So please, please, please do that. And I do want to uh, mention in closing uh, that um, we are recording on International Women's Day. So um, uh, shout out to all our amazing women. Um, what we try to do always is ex expand the sense of possibility for women so that no one is ever stuck. So uh, absolutely break the bias, as they say. Break and, the bias right on. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and, and, and let's get on with it because um, the sense of possibility for uh, women I've had the privilege to work in is phenomenal. So we'll close with that. Thanks again. And uh, Alan, you've been awesome, mate. Uh, really appreciate it. And see you all on the next one. Thanks for listening. Cheers. Take care. Bye.